And welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Thursday afternoon MEM Edge show. This is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. Today, as usual, we are going to take a look at where the markets closed for the week. A bit bumpy, a little bit of rotation shaping up here. Also from there, we do want to take a look at some of that headline news that drove price action this week. You want to be aware of what is moving the markets and why. And then also from there, we will take a look again at some of that rotation that's beginning to uh, turn up here and how you can capitalize on that. So let's go ahead and take a look. I will share with you the headline news this week. First up earlier this week, we did see job openings fell to a 21 month low. From there, we did see private sector jobs pulling back. And all of this data relating to employment is pointing toward a potential contraction in the economy, which in turn really bubbled up recession fears. And you'll see that as I move through today's view of where we closed for the week, which areas are seemingly moving into favor. And it is all about those recessionary fears. The ISM data did show a slowdown in the service side of the economy. And this is the broadest, largest part of the economy. So certainly it has people sitting up. Weekly jobless claims did increase that came out today. So again, these numbers are not dramatic, but they certainly are taking us down a path where the economy may be slowing. Tomorrow on Friday is a holiday for the markets. However, there will be very critical monthly data as it relates to employment. The jobs report comes out on Friday. The bond market will be open on Friday. And we will, I will be keeping a very close eye, I suggest you do as well, on the impact of that jobs data on the yields for the 10 year and even shorter term as well. It could be quite telling as it relates to possible price action going into next week. Next week as well, we will see core CPI and core PPI data being released, two very important inflation metrics. All of this as we move closer to that May 2nd and 3rd Federal Reserve meeting where they will announce any interest rate hike or not and provide potential further insight into their path going into the remainder of this year. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll share with you where the broader markets closed and we can get a feel for where we are. And here we are with the daily price chart of the S&P 500. And this broader index was mostly flat for the week, but we did have our bumpiness throughout that period. I did want to point out a couple of metrics here relative to the S&P 500. Our momentum is still positive, that RSI above 50, trending higher. Likewise, with the stochastics in positive territory as well. So that positive momentum is still behind the markets. We did have what I term a follow through day take shape last month. Those of you that are subscribers to my MEM Edge report will know all about that. It does signal a near-term bottom in the markets. And subsequent to that, we've been able to remain above each of these key simple moving averages. Of note as well is the fact that this shorter term 10-day moving average has crossed above the longer term 50-day, and that is known as a golden cross, a bit of a secondary indicator. But if you go back historically, it has preceded further upside. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ. You want to be aware of where this leading index closed for the week. It certainly has been the leadership area year to date. And this daily price chart view shows a little bit more in the way of choppiness. It was down over 1% this week. And of note is the fact that our momentum does also remain in positive territory, RSI stochastics above 50, trending higher. And then I have this marked area here at that 1200 level. And this has been really cited as a key area of potential upside resistance, which we did break through last week, dipped below that, 
But on Thursday today, we were able to close the week back above that 1200 level that is encouraging with the positive momentum in place. So from here as usual, let's go ahead and dig a little deeper. We want to dig behind or below the markets and see what is shaping up among the 11 sectors in the S&P 500. So this is a two-month daily price chart view. I've added a relative strength indicator. It's sort of descending. So up in this upper quartile will be your relatively stronger areas and then your weaker areas down here in this bottom area. So up here at the forefront, XLP is consumer staples, XLV is healthcare and utilities. So we can see that shift that I was alluding to, where there is a move into these more defensive areas of the market, higher yielding, and again, all about fears that the economy is contracting. Also up here, XLC, this is the communication services. A lot of that having to do with an excellent week for Alphabet or Google, which is a major holding here. Uh, there are other vibrant areas, but I would say that is the most notable. So from here, I do want to share with you that XLV chart because it is rather dramatic. Healthcare did fall out of favor well before other areas back here in mid to late December and really has not recovered until this week where this ETF or this sector is back above each of these moving averages. Nice high volume characteristics. I will tell you overall, there was light volume this past week, but not so with healthcare. And then we can see that the RSI is in positive territory with that MACD just dipping up into positive territory. I will share with you areas of strength within healthcare. But for me at this juncture, it is certainly one of the more interesting and compelling areas that you could find not only defensive names, but also growth and yield to help buffer any potential downside that we might see in growth stocks. So as we move forward, we can take a look at certainly technology, which has been a clear-cut leadership group. We do still have positive momentum here with that RSI and MACD. D. However, there was a pullback in technology. It was down about 1.3% relative to the NASDAQ, down 1% and the S&P flat. So still holding up, but we did see it pull back a bit more than the markets this week. Another area that I did want to share with you and point out is a pretty, I wouldn't say severe, but a 3.4% pullback in industrials XLI. And this is being driven by those recession fears, particularly those global facing industrial companies, transports pulling back. And we can see that it is now in negative territory relative to that momentum. Another area that I did want to share with you is the continued deterioration, or certainly I would say non-momentum to the upside that is continuing in financial stocks. They were down only about a half of a percent. They do still have work to do from here. I will share with you a view of that regional banking ETF to give a little bit more flavor in as it relates to the weakness there. We did see energy stocks rally 2.6% moving back above this 50 day. And this is all about oil production cuts that took place last weekend. However, a dive deep into this group, I would suggest there are only a handful of names that are exhibiting this similar bullish pattern, a lot of continued weakness in energy. So you do need to be selective if you are looking to participate in that downtrend reversal. So from here, let's go ahead and move a bit further. And I'll share with you some of the ETFs that I find super valuable in helping embrace and uh, in uncover where relative strength or weakness is taking place. As always, you want to make sure you're not overweighted in any of those weaker areas. But let's take a look. Again, that same RSI descending order and gold fared well up 1.8%. You can see your momentum up here trending upward. Again, recession fear related, but very much in an uptrend. Let's take a look at a longer term monthly chart. This is GLD, one of many ETFs, but this is the S&P 
gold shares ETF. And on this very long-term monthly with a six-month moving average, you can see that we are in a potentially longer-term uptrend with your momentum still in the early stages of turning positive. And another area that we can take a look at, at look at as far as shaping price action last week was this big gap up here in energy. This is Brent crude pricing closed the week at about 80 Five. So that was a driver, again, all about oil production cuts that took shape last weekend. From here, we can move into healthcare. I mentioned and shared with you that turn that is taking place. This is IHI, which is the U.S. Medical Devices ETF, and this is where you can capture growth among the healthcare space. These are going to be companies that are providing particular devices, diabetes, heart-related, and so forth. So a nice uptrend in that. It did not outperform last week, but we are seeing a nice consistent uptrend. The real move here for me is all about IBB, and this is the NASDAQ Biotechnology ETF, has broken back above that 50-day momentum, just getting into positive territory here with that MACD, RSI trending higher. And certainly, this when this particular group gets going, you can really take advantage of the move in the names that are experiencing not only superior technical price action, but also for me, I want to see that growth prospects, that innovation taking place. Biotech stocks fared well in the 08 recession as the products and the innovative at that point in time, uh, certain, again, drugs and so forth that were being developed were still in need regardless that the economy was pulling back and shrinking. Another area of note this past week is the fact that, again, recession-related, this is XRT, the S&P Retail ETF, had a nice week the prior week, but it gave back most of that, pulling back this week. And we can see that this downtrend reversal attempt has and is now falling with your momentum in negative territory. Another area that I want to share with you is in technology, and that is semiconductor stocks. SOXX is this semiconductor ETF, and you can see it pulled back almost 5%, barely clinging to its 50-day simple moving average momentum here, seemingly shifting. This is something I'm going to cover quite a bit in my MEM Edge Report Sunday's version because semiconductors have been very instrumental or an important part of the move upside in the NASDAQ. Certainly, this is that January rally pullback here, a nice rally before this weakness may be settling in. And I'll share with you why we are seeing weakness in semiconductors and what to be on the lookout for there. Another area of note is the yield on that 10 year, and it's now down at about 3.3% seemingly still heading lower. This is another impactful item that you want to be aware of as it relates to the broader markets. Another reason that we are seeing a move into those higher yielding defensive areas of the market. So from here, let's go ahead and I will share with you, I talked about that move into healthcare from here. I did want to begin by sharing with you one of the certainly best performers, I would say, among these large cap pharmas. This is MRK, Merck, nice base breakout, pretty good volume, momentum, just getting into positive territory. Now, this particular pharmaceutical name is a heavyweight in an ETF. So when I see a particular group beginning to move higher within a broader sector move, I want to be able to identify the ETF that is seeing the most in the way of upside momentum. The reason there is you can quite easily from here take a look at their top 10 holdings. And sure enough, this is PPH, the Banach Vectors Pharmaceutical ETF, pretty significant upside price action here. You may think a lot of this is behind it, but when looking at those top holdings, there's some quite attractive charts, Merck included. So let's go ahead and I will share with you a couple of other stocks from this ETF that have a very heavy weighting. And uh, AstraZeneca, this is a, a European-based pharmaceutical company, 
nice double bottom formation rally and then a gap up to a new high. Now, the RSI certainly is above 70, seemingly overbought. But from here, when you see that take place, whether it's on a daily or a weekly chart, you want to know that there is historical precedence where it can remain above in that overbought position and continue to make progress. If in the event of a pullback, you want to make sure that the momentum, in this case, the RSI stays in positive territory and keep your eye on that MACD momentum as well. One other name that we can take a quick look at here that's not quite ready for prime time, but is a top holding that's been on the move, and that is Bristol Myers BMY. And we can see I'm from here, I'm going to pull up a weekly very quickly and share with you this kind of double bottom how it found support here at that 65 level and is now advancing on the weekly the rsi just dipping into positive territory not quite ready for prime time on the weekly either because we've not seen that macd crossover but let's take a look again at the daily chart you can see the macd just entering positive territory where it's joining an already positive rsi now you will want to pay attention at this 200 day simple moving average quite simply it will be your next potential upside roadblock and from there you would be much freer to move higher. And it's really of interest and note that to me, that when these stocks get going, you can see some pretty significant moves. And then from there, it, you were well served to broaden out your view to get that weekly. And then in some cases, monthly view to really help smooth out this kind of diciness that is taking place really in many areas of the broader markets. I talked about biotech names, just a couple of names that we can take a quick look at here. Not all of them are going to be super large cap, but all of the names that I'm going to be looking at will have earnings. This is AMPH, and it is a bit of a smaller company, but you can see this is in release response to a release of earnings, and it's been propelled into a very healthy, nice uptrend here with your momentum shift into upside high gear. One other name that we can also take a look at, this is going to be a bit of uh, bigger name, certainly better known, and that is Regeneron, R-E-G-N, gap up on positive news into a base breakout and now into an uptrend. So again, from my work, if you are also inclined not to buy biotech names that are bleeding or losing money, you can quite simply purchase the ETF and potentially participate in any further upside price action. So another area or another item that we can take a look at, given this shift that is potentially taking place in the broader markets, you will want to be aware of downtrend reversals and what to be on the lookout for as it relates to a downtrend reversal that works and takes shape versus one that does not. So I will share with you a semiconductor name that is in the throes of reversing its downtrend despite a move really uh, a pullback last week in semis. And this is Intel. And we're really going to focus on the chart here with INTC. And that is your first sign of a downtrend reversal. From my work, is going to be a move above the moving averages, above this 200 day. And I'm just going to take a minute here to mark this up of note. And certainly when you're in with these larger names, you're going to have much easier access to news. So this uh, move into an uptrend took place amid analyst upgrades to the outlook of the growth prospects for this particular company. And what we can see that occurred simultaneously is a nice continuation of that RSI in positive territory. I've also highlighted the fact that it was this downtrend reversal took place on very heavy volume. You want to see that volume indicating accumulation. And then as the stock continues to trend higher, that volume remains relatively up, uh, really above average. And then your MACD also trending higher. So that is a view of a successful downtrend reversal. I'm pointing this out as we move into potential sector rotation. We saw that healthcare is in the throes of reversing its downtrend. From here, let's take a look at names that were in the beginning stages of reversing their downtrend. 
but have not taken hold. And first up is going to be an industrial XLI defense related name. And this is Rockwell Automation, ROK. And the stock really is on a nice growth path. And you can see prior, this is the banking crises pullback that really impacted industrial as well as other stocks. And so subsequent to that, this is, uh, we were beginning to see a downtrend reversal take place, nice double bottom formation. But let's go ahead and compare this to Intel so that you can be aware of the differences in a downtrend reversal that takes shape and one that does. And so we do see this nice move above those moving averages. Let's go ahead and take a look at the volume. The volume certainly relative to historical precedent really isn't there. You're not seeing that accumulation, that big money come in that's gonna support a continued move higher. And then another key metric here is that MACD on the daily. We did see that black line come up through the red. However, it did not enter positive territory. So the only really positive item was the fact that that RSI did dip into positive territory. But from my work, when I am on the prowl for downtrend reversals, I will need to see the proof, i.e. more than one day above these moving averages. I will want to see that volume. And I ideally will also want to see that MACD enter into positive territory. So also, you will want to pay attention to the price action of the group that it's a part of. And interestingly, that Intel was in semis, but still reversing potentially higher. Let's take a look at another downtrend reversal that has not taken hold uh, as of yet, and that is Airbnb, another company that has been growing, but it's of note what industry group is it a part of. And when we look at some of these travel-related names, hotels and so forth, when you talk about a recession, it's you're not anticipating a lot of people to be traveling quite as extensively as they have been. So here we are with that move back above these moving averages. You can see we did get that positive RSI, but again, Mac never making it into positive territory. And as the stock sells off, that's when you see a pickup there in the volume. And it doesn't mean it's over for good here. We will see if it finds support here, but again, not taking hold. From here, we'll take a look at one last name that is reversing its downtrend and seemingly taking hold as of now. And that is Visa. We can see that this stock pulled back, but held in relatively well during the bank crises. And here we are with V, Visa, the stock now up above each of these shorter term moving averages. And we're getting that nice uptrending action in the RSI. And likewise, that MACD made it into positive territory. One other item that I do want to mark up here that a lot of people don't really talk about, but it is critical. And that is that high volume when the stock advances further above these simple moving averages. In essence, it allows allows these other moving averages to then begin to trend higher and act as support instead of upside resistance. So that's going to be your key difference there as it relates to you were uh, being potentially on the prowl to capitalize on rotation into some of these newer areas. Now, I also wanted to share with you some of these leadership names, particularly high growth. Growth names did not fare that well relatively last week. So we're going to take a look at Arista Networks. That's A N. ET, a real nice winner here. Certainly since that January rally, it did not participate in the pullback in the broader markets in February and remained in a very confirmed uptrend. So here we are with ANET on the daily. You will want to keep an eye because we are coming out of an overbought position with that RSI above 70. From here, that MACD crossover is not a sell signal, that black line down through the red. Quite simply, it can indicate that the stock is just in a pause period. But if we do see that RSI get into negative territory, and I'm going to share with you some historical precedents as a guide. So here we are back here, and that is taking us uh, 
into last December. We had that pullback take place. And as the stock begins to break below these shorter term moving averages on above average volume, indicating distribution. So you will be, I am certainly on the lookout for that possibility here with this. And then some of these other uh, leadership names. We'll take a look at another stock here that did pull back after reporting very strong earnings. It's a smaller uh, footwear, athletic footwear company. I believe they're based out of Switzerland. This is ON Holding. And you can see that big gap up. They came out with great numbers, well above average, I mean, estimates. And we can see this upside price action taking place on very big volume, also in an overbought position. Now, if the stock can retain a presence above this gap up, that is going to be positive, not quite as concerned with ONON. One other big winner coming out of earnings recently is uh, D-U-O-L. This is Duolingo. And this is another company that had a gap up into a base breakout. Nice uptrend holding in just remarkably well. Also came in well above estimates. So while we are overbought, you're still in a nice confirmed uptrend. Last up, we will take a look at a company that fared well after earnings, but is also pulling back with that momentum now in negative territory. Going to keep an eye on that MACD. If we dip into negative territory, will, will be a bit concerning, but we are currently, this is DKS Dix, and it is still finding support at that upward trending 50 day. If you own it, you should be fine. Uh, but you will want to keep an eye on whether it is able to retain support here. And then again, keep an eye out on that volume to indicate whether it is under accumulation or distribution. And everyone, that's it for this week. I hope you have a fantastic long weekend. Before you leave, use that button below to trial my MEM Edge twice weekly report for a very nominal fee. We're in a rather tricky period in the markets, and I'm all about guiding you, helping you navigate these tough times, and then all about looking beyond just next week. You want to have a view or a vision that's going to take you out a bit further. Take care. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.